I'm Ruth Hansom and this is the Great British Chef's Signature Series. I joined the Princess of Shoreditch about two months ago. My dishes are quite modern, but they use a lot of classical techniques. I think it's really important to use things that are in season, so our menu changes quite often. I really like pickling things. I think every dish kind of needs, you know, that sharpness, the sweetness, the saltiness. I really definitely think people should eat more apple. Obviously, I think it's something that needs a lot of love. It's really important to use every part of the animal for me. I think if we're going to kill something, then we should be using everything. I don't want to waste anything. Hi, I'm Ruth Hansom. I'm head chef at the Princess of Shoreditch, and today I'm cooking a veal sweetbread, uh, glazed in Madeira sauce, and crusted with black pudding and walnut, spiced carrot puree, and a pickled plum salad. So the first step we need to do is make the carrot puree. So I've got some carrots here, I've just peeled and sliced them. I'm going to sweat those off, I really want to get the sugar coming out of there. And then I've got a little bit of ginger which I'm going to put in there as well, and we'll cook that in milk and then blend it. This dish is very simple. The thing I like most about it is using offal. I think it's really important to use every part of the animal. So we buy a lot of whole animals actually, our sister restaurant called The Pig and Butcher in Islington and then we break them down and we kind of split them between us and I think it's just really important to use absolutely everything. I'm just going to roughly chop this and we'll add it to the carrots. Yeah, I'm just going to put some ginger in there with that and just let it sweat down. So I'm just adding the milk now, we've sweated it down, we've released some of those sugars and then we're just going to let it soften in the milk and then we'll blend it. Okay, so I'm just going to blend our carrots now so they're nice and soft, they've been cooking in the milk for about 25 minutes. We're just going to tip it into the thermal and we're going to blend it. You can do this in any blender if you've got a smoothie machine or something at home, even if you've got a hand blender, anything kind of works. So next I'm just going to prep a few leaves for the salad. I'm using some red endive, it's quite earthy and bitter. Uh, I think it works quite well, everything else is quite sweet on the dish. I'm just going to pick off the individual leaves. Next, I've got a little bit of frizzy. We really just want the really light coloured leaves here. I like how it looks and it's quite bitter. It's not got too much body, which I think kind of is quite nice in the way that the salad sits. As a child, I was really interested in food and cooking. I started off with growing and then, you know, you've got all this produce that you've grown from a seed and you need to do something with it. So that's when I started to get quite involved in cooking. And I did Food Chef, which is run by Springboard. I was quite lucky enough to get through to the national final. So I found a flat on Gumtree and told my mum I was moving to London. I think she thought I was a bit nuts and that I'd be back in a few weeks, but I really loved it and I've not been back. So next, I've got a few pickles here. So I've got some plums. They've been pickled for around a month in uh, white wine vinegar, sugar, and then they've got star anise, cardamom, and also some fennel stalks in there. And then the same, I've got some fennel, which I lightly shredded and did in exactly the same pickle and shallot as well. What's nice about this is all the colour comes off the plum and then you can actually use this as our dressing for the salad at the end. There's probably a misconception. I think the most important thing is using sugar. Lots of people just think pickling is just vinegar. You need to balance that out. Usually equal quantities of a water, vinegar and a sugar or a honey. Then you can start adding spices, flavours, if you want to add garlic or herbs. You can kind of go from there. So I'm just going to cut this into some little diamond shapes uh, to go through our salad. I've also got the sweetbreads here. So what I've done with these, I've just brought them to the boil um, in some water with bay leaves and thyme. So the sweetbread, the one we're using here is a gland from the neck um, of a veal, a baby cow. But they, they can come from other parts of the body, in the nether regions. You can get them from lamb as well. But the veal, you know, it's, it's really big and it is actually considered as a delicacy now. Okay, so I've got the sweetbreads and I've also got some plain flour mixed with a little bit of curry powder. I don't really want this to be spiced, but it just adds it a little bit of warmth. And the idea of this is gonna form a nice crust on our sweetbread. So I'm just gonna roll these in here and then I'll just dust them off. I love sweetbreads personally. I think they're really delicious. They're super soft in the middle and you wanna get that crunch on the outside. It's quite an unusual thing, you know, it's not something that you necessarily just pick up from the supermarket, but if you go to your butchers, you can definitely get a hold of some. The first time I ever ate sweetbread was at the Ritz, so it was always on the menu there. I was cooking with it quite often and I'd never actually eaten it, so I asked if I could try some and it was delicious. So I'm gonna pan fry these now. We're gonna start with a little bit of ripseed oil. Then you want a hot pan, but not too hot. We don't want it to burn. We're just going to let this get a nice crust on it and then we'll add butter and just form that. So in this pan, I'm going to reduce some Madeira sauce. So to make that, I've coloured off some chicken wings, lots and lots of nice golden colour. And then I've added mirepoix of button mushroom, shallot, garlic, thyme and let that colour as well. 
And then I've reduced that with Madeira and then added chicken stock and just let that braise for about four hours before passing it. We just want to reduce that so it's going to form a nice glaze for our sweet breads. To help with our glaze, it's going to thicken it a little bit. And then in this pan, it's going to be our crust. So it's just some black pudding and chopped up walnuts. I'm going to add a little bit of butter to that as well. So in this pan, we've got our carrot puree, which is just going to sit under our sweet bread. So I'm just going to warm that up gently. I think the restaurant scene has definitely become a lot more diverse. You know, there's people coming now from all over the world. You know, you've got kind of three-star chefs and things coming over here and setting up as well. I think that's great. You know, it means that we can try food without having to travel. So I'm adding butter here and we're going to baste it. I've got a little crushed club of garlic as well. I definitely think uh, people are more willing to be challenged. There's lots of different cuisines from other countries and I think quite typically they use some more daring products. And I think that's really nice, you know. The one nice thing about food is you can never know everything. So it's great to keep trying new things. We've got our crumb here now. It's nice and crispy and toasted. So I'm just going to pull that off and put it to the side. I never thought that I would become a chef because I've always had this dream of kind of going to university and I actually wanted to be a doctor. And it was actually Future Chef and Springboard that really kind of highlighted to me and my parents that it is a profession and it's something that, you know, you can be proud of. But I still think there's a long way to go. If you look at other countries like France and Germany, you know, that they're up there. And if you say to somebody you're a chef, it's like, oh, wow. Whereas I still think in this country it's a bit hit and miss. So now I'm just going to move my sweetbreads into our pan with the Madeira and then we're going to glaze that up. The sweetbreads, obviously we want that crisp outside skin on the top that you've kind of formed with the flour, but inside should be nice and soft and buttery. So now, last thing, we're going to dress our salad. So again, I've got my endive and frisé in here. I'm going to add the plums. I'm also going to add a bit of the liquid because that's going to form our dressing with some rapeseed oil. This one is actually about three months old now because every time we do it, we just keep using the same liquid. Um, and the flavour just keeps intensifying. So some of our fennel, and a few bits of our shallot, a couple of red vein sorrel leaves. I really love rapeseed oil. I, I use it for everything, dressing. Um, you, can, you know, there's some really fantastic cold pressed rapeseed oils. And then just a little bit of mould and salt. Just all that. Gently, we don't want to break anything down. Just want to bring that all together. So I'm just going to give my sweet bread one last glaze. Just going to take some of our crumb and just put it on top. I think it's really important to have colours. Obviously, it's, it's your first impression of the dish. If you cook something well and you use great ingredients, the kind of presentation is quite easy. You don't have to do too much to things. If you use them when they're in season and when they're at the best, they instantly look beautiful. So that's it, we've got a veal sweetbread glazed with Madeira and a walnut and black pudding crust and a pickle plum salad.